Revolution in the game, hell yeah, we made it. Made it. Overcame the obstacles, all the people that was hated. Ooh. Hard work pays off, oh. now I'm sitting like a boss. 2020, yeah, we getting money, yeah, we never gonna fall off. Lowercase G, but still, still up top with it. Uh, the maestro, the guru, the teacher, the father, philanthropist, a uh, business owner. Like, what's been going on in Ty's world, man? Man, shoot a whole lot. Like you said, you know, first and foremost, just trying to be a uh, man of yah and, and, and a family man. You know what I mean? So I'm no doubt. A new son, so I'm excited about that. Man. Congratulations. So no doubt. Uh, was this something planned? Or just <laughs> kind of... Quarantine baby. Quarantine baby. Ah. Nah, but um, big blessing. We ain't know. We ain't know. We weren't trying to get pregnant, but... Uh, yeah. You know, uh, it's all good. I got, a, I got a, a big family. Family of four, man. I'm blessed, bro. No doubt. No doubt. Um, how Man, let's just talk about how you got started. Like, I remember you was the guy... That just used to shoot crazy trick shots. <laughs> I never thought that would turn into an affinity or a or a love of the game, but I know you used to make crazy shots from. Uh, I mean, you would take them in pressure situations. Mm -hmm. And so, how did that turn into like discipline and structure and teaching and championships? How did that all evolve for you? I mean, obviously, you know how we came up, where we came up, and uh, you know, sports was an outlet for most of us. You know what I'm saying? And at first, like you said, when I was young, I really I played the game. It was fun, but I didn't take it serious. Yeah. Uh, I was in the streets, you know, getting into trouble. And uh, I don't know, John, like, you know, just trying to figure out a way out. You know what I'm saying? I always had I always had some sense. And I knew I didn't want to be in the hood forever. I knew I didn't want to be hustling and in the streets. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, basketball was the outlet. It was the tool. It was the thing I fell in love with. And uh, once I... Once I felt like I was validated through the game, I just wanted to take it to the highest level that I could take it to, and, and I knew that took work. You know what I mean? So that's where that came in. I just, I think the more, the more serious you are about something, you yeah. attract the resources and the information that you need to be able to be the best at it. Uh, who was some of the guards? Like who was some of the? Just not even guards, but just players that you looked up to, like on the on the um, NBA level. And then probably like in the prep spotlight when you were coming up, is there anybody who you you was just gunning for or you kind of took things from their game? On the NBA level, uh, you know our era. Obviously, when you young, young, uh, you know you see Mike. Mike was Mike. Yeah, was for going. sure. And Isaiah, you know, I was always a, a, attracted to people who could handle the ball. So Isaiah was one for me. And then as I got a little older, um, you know, AI, uh, Marbury. Uh, Aaron Davis, Steve Francis, guys like that. Yeah. Guys who could create for themselves and others and, you know, had a little bit of everything. Athleticism, could score, could shoot, could pass, you know. So those were some of the guys who were real uh, inspirational for me when I was younger. And then as far as, like, on the prep scene, um, like I said, I was in the streets, in the hood, on Mount Vernon and Trevitt and Bolivar Arms. I really wasn't going to no high school games or nothing like that when I was a kid. Yeah. So uh, it was more like, yo, you know what I mean, dudes, my peers, in the neighborhood, you know, you, uh, Mario, Collins, Tug, Jake, you know what I mean, Marshawn. Um, R.I.P. R.I.P. Uh, Terry, R.I.P. Jason Terry, Smith, man. Seth, Rosie, June. Yeah. And uh, I give June a lot of credit, man. June was really the one that took me under. I didn't know he was as good as he was, June man. Was, he used to clown a lot. He was the illest one out of all of us, though. I'm going to keep it real, bro. He was 6'4", could handle, could jump out the gym. Creative. So, Creative, could shoot, could score, could pass, unselfish, and he was a mean as a rattlesnake. He was with the smart, he was with everything. Whatever, yeah, he was. However you wanted to do it. Yeah, so he, he took me under his, under his wing and really gave me confidence. Like, bro, you good. Like, you got to know that you good. And um, just playing against him every day, him and Waki. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just took my game to another level, man. They really pushed me. Now I had interviewed Waki, and he said he felt Jason Smith was the best out the hood. So you giving a nod to uh, Clee. Yeah, for sure. You gonna give it to Clay? Smith was uh, Smith was athletic, and he was he was good, bro. I ain't gonna lie. He was athletic. He was quick. 
Yeah. Um, he wasn't so much of a shooter. But Smith was good, bro. But nah, Jones. <laughs> you, give it, you give it to Clarence Jones, hands, yeah, down. hands down. Bro, for me. What did people like? Um, what did what did like Summerall? I know we had Mr. Taylor, we had Mr. Williams in the boxing uh, arena, we had Mr. M who would come in and do some stuff with the fundamentals with the girls. But what did somebody like Summerall coming into the rec center? What did he bring that kind of brought something out in you? Uh, first and foremost. Couldn't stand some role. <laughs> when, he first, when he first came around, uh, you know, we respected Mr. Williams, we respected Mr. Taylor, and we yeah. respected boxing coach Mr. Williams, of course. They For sure. It. Um, but they were older, you know what I mean? And some was like younger, and he was with everything we was with, man. He wasn't playing no games. We used to try to test him and all that. He invited us outside, like. From the hood, just like y'all. So, yeah. Uh, at first, he rubbed me the wrong way. All of us the wrong way. But then we saw that he really cared. He he used to make us like instead of just have open gym, we got to run around the track. Yeah. Get warm. Get some conditioning in. Then he started taking us to the weight room. At that time, I'm 12, 13. I, I remember that. Weight. That yeah, was crazy. I'm like, Man, he taking us to the weight room. I ain't trying to. And then I understood what he was trying to do. And then how he got me for real, honestly. He started taking us out to eat, bro. You yeah, know, <laughs> and yeah. meals was hard to come by. So yeah. He started taking us out to eat, but really dropping jewels on us, showing us he cared about us and he loved us. And then uh, what made him what made him the goat to me, he uh, he took a van, matter of fact, the Sawyer van, the CRPD van. Yeah. And took uh I think the same dudes we talking about, Jason, you know, Clarence, all them dudes. Took him up to Grand Rapids Community College where he went to school. Wow. Got them dudes in the school, bro. Like, you know, these yeah. were dudes who didn't have no grades and was counted out. And when I saw that as a 10th grader, I was on my way to dropping out. You know what I'm mm. saying? And I was like losing hope. And when I saw that my dudes that was like in similar positions to me was was able to go to college, it restored that hope, man. And Summerall being like an uncle, man, ever since. Like, I love Summerall. No doubt. Now, just being on the streets was that was that voluntarily or was that something that life just gave you because i think that's what kind of separated you from everybody is that you know we was in school or we might have been uh had our eyes on something but you was in like a survival mode yeah. but in that time it, it brought something to your basketball game like i don't respect nobody i ain't you might be number one over here but where i play at this person number one right so what did that, what you being out there, what was that like? And was it, you know, because, like, were you afraid? Was it moments where you slept physically outside? How did you eat? And what, what made you want to play ball? Yeah, man, like, you hit it on the head, bro. It was survival mode, man, my situation. You know, we was in the hood. Everybody's situation was bad, boy. Yeah. I was, like, one of the worst of the worst, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, man, so... My situation was so dire when it when when I started to hoop, that energy transferred. You know what I mean? Like you said, and I, I didn't care about nothing, bro. Like, bro, my situation. When I go home, like I'm, people say they play and they hungry. They play with a hunger. I was literally hungry. Like, bro, I didn't eat nothing today, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. ain't nothing at the crib when I go home, bro. And I might not even go to the crib. I done <laughs> spent the night over everybody's house in the hood. Um, yeah. I done slept outside on the porch in the bottom of my arms. Like, you know what I mean? My story a real one, bro. I remember one time I'll tell this story. You probably, I don't know if you was there. You probably remember this. Wow. I think we was going to Everett. Uh -huh. And me and Ron Williamson, man, my dog at the time, has had blew some trees, bro. We like in the seventh grade. We blew some trees. We was hanging with uh, R.I.P. Stephen, bro. We was yeah, Stephen, man. And, uh, and shoot, at the time, we ain't had nowhere to go. I couldn't get in my crib. He couldn't get to his crib. Bro, we fell asleep high as a mug in the car, bro, uh -huh. on a school day. And we woke up, and everybody was going to the bus, was opening the doors, laughing at us, like, <laughs> man, what y'all do? We hide in the mugs and seen the whole Trevin out there, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it was stuff like that, man. So, like, I, I, I went through so many difficult situations, like homelessness and just abandonment and everything I was dealing with. So, when I got in the court, bro, and I, was, I felt like this was my way out, it was a different energy. When you finally, I mean, you had the street rap, and you had the um, you had the AAU thing buzz going uh, through, you know, playing with Mike Bell and various teams you played for. Mm -hmm. When you finally got on that prep spotlight and you know begin to play varsity ball at Centennial, what's in your head at this time? Honestly, like I just knew my whole mindset was like, can't nobody check me, bro, and I'm gonna play hard and, and try 
to win, bro. That was yeah. it. Like I knew couldn't nobody check me, bro. And I and, and and that confidence came from playing in our hood. Our hood was rough with a lot of talent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if I can, like you said, I was just picking them off. All the dudes who supposed to be nice, if I can go with him in our hood, then you know. And not just the basketball players, the, the gangsters too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So um, that that built my confidence up, and I didn't know what I was into. Like I had a, it was the ignorance factor there too. Like I didn't know that. The, the, the magnitude of what those games meant, and, yeah. you know, in terms of like getting to college and getting notoriety and getting accolades and all that stuff. I ain't know that, bro. Yeah. You know, and you was there, so you know, like I just we was hoping, bro, and we we had, we were shorthanded. You know, we had the talent that we had that we had, but we had a lot of heart, and we was and we was going with it. We was coming, we was coming at whoever. So. For sure, we kind of got like warm, you know, that West Stone game and. Uh... A lot of games that kind of got us like uh, we started getting hot towards the end yeah, when sure. we got everybody back. Mm -hmm. Now, what led into, um, okay, that was what, your junior year? Yeah, that was my junior year. Okay, what led into your decision to, at that time, transfer and go back to East, which is kind of like our alma mater yeah, for our hood? School, for real. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but like my first day of school was at East. I just went, my last year I went to champion and, uh, when I went to champion, everybody that was at champion was at East, and I was getting in trouble. I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm. I knew at the time I wasn't mature enough to be around the same crew. Yeah, and that we still hang trying around to do with. what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to play ball at the time, but I wasn't disciplined enough to get the grades and do what I was supposed to do. Yeah. But I was smart enough to know, like, nah, this ain't gonna be it. So I left and went to Centennial. So that played a factor. Like, um, it was all my homies there, and they always had a squad, just always missing a piece or two. Yeah. And. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of other suitors, a lot of other places I could have went, but that just made sense for me from, from you know, from the hood perspective. Like, man, I'm going to go play with my homies, man. Yeah. LJ was the first person to ever take me to Sawyer. Yeah. And he was the wow. one in my ear telling me to come over to East. So it just made sense, you know what I'm saying? It came back full circle. And, uh, yeah, and it, it worked out. It worked out, for real. We had some good team success, man. We got some memories for life. And, uh we, we kind of restored that tradition, that East High tradition. Now, with having that coaching staff you had, what was some of the conversations in the locker room? What was practices like? You know, you got Granville, Mike Bell, Coach White. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, Mike Thornton. Mike Thornton. Oh, uh, man. Coach B, that's at East right now. Yeah. Uh, Coach Lonnie, Coach Joe. Yeah, man. Man, listen. <laughs> <laughs> when I tell you that was a legendary year, uh, I start with Coach Granville, man. Rest in peace to him. R.P. Granville. Uh, he was, he was like a phenomenal, um, he made a phenomenal impact in my life, man, on the positive side. Um, he just, gentle, gentle spirit, man, benevolent dude, man, he's going to try to help. And he, he, what he showed me, the difference between, even him, even Coach White and, and Coach Herford at Centennial, like these dudes did over and above. Mike, Mike Bell, we'll get to Mike Bell because he needs his own segment. Yeah. But he, one thing he said is like, the time that you spend with people, outside of the time that you have to be around them shows how much you value them. And they showed us that, man. You know what I mean? A whole bunch of kids from the hood, they would take us and go get Donato, bro, and just let us kick it. You know what I'm saying? Run it up for $200. You know what I mean? And yeah. Stuff like that meant a lot to us, you know? And they really just showed us that they cared. But Granville gave me a lot of jewels, man, on how to conduct myself, how to be, how to get yourself to the pro level and stuff like that. We would talk about, you know, I had some stories about Jordan and, uh, I tell this story <laughs> in his honor. He told me, uh, he was telling me how good Kareem was, right? Yeah. And he said when he was with the Rockets, um, he was obviously was the backup center, and Hakeem had to guard him. And he was like, the coach told him, every time you get the ball, shoot a sky hook. I don't care where it goes, it's two points. That's how good Kareem is. Right? Wow. So he got the ball. He said he was throwing it over the backboard. He was airballing everything. It was two points. He had like 50 that game, that, that practice. <laughs> So he just would give us stuff that we wouldn't, we wouldn't have got nowhere else, man, with his experience being in there. Yeah. And all that. But he was a great, great dude. He gave us, he he helped Waki a lot, you know, uh, around that post, being in the post. Yeah. Um, yeah, Granville was a great dude, man, and we did. He helped me a lot after, after like up until last year, bro. Like he helped, he always supported and everything. So it hurt my heart to hear that he passed, but he he, had, he left a great legacy behind. And it's it makes it so crazy is um. You know, me and you have been talking back and forth, but Granville, had, uh, I had connected with him through his niece, and I was uh, scheduled to interview him. We were supposed to get, get together. 
And so it was a shocker for me too. You know what I mean? So I'm glad you was able to drop that because I I think I missed out. And that's what this Mike Pippen one-on-one -on -one with Mike Pippen is really all about. Like giving people their flowers. Absolutely, why they're still here. Yeah, and creating like, man, the things y'all doing is big. The things we all do are so monumental. And if we were in another city, you'd have been on Vlad or yeah, this person's sure. show. You know what I mean? For sure. Been in a bigger spot, like so. I appreciate what you're doing, man. No doubt, um, it's, it's big time, man. And keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing, man. Your platform's gonna grow, bro. You always, you always been innovative like that. And you've been on the news it, since what you was 10. No doubt, <laughs> scraping the surface, <laughs> man, baby. My dog got so much personality, bro. You, no you, doubt, you born to do it, bro. 100%. No doubt, and it's and I appreciate you because every time you see me, we you know, we go in like that. Yeah, it's love, man. Um, Mike Bell, though. We can't leave Yeah, yeah, Mike we Bell. get the mic, man. Yeah, yeah for so sure. I'll I, I, I shout out the other coaches. Mike How you and Mike, man, link up? And I, what I'll was say, that like? I'll say Mike Thornton first. Mike Thornton is a legend. Y'all don't know about him. State titles. One of the best trainers around. For sure. Shout Mike Thornton, him. shout out, man. Shout out to Coach B over at East doing his thing. Coach B. I'm going to down. But Mike Bell, man, I'm going to tell you. So when I when I went in Coach White's office, man, he was giving me his pitch about why I should come to East and this and that. And I was already sold off my friend. But... Uh, I told him, I said, man, it's one stipulation. He was like, what's that? I said, Mike Bell got to come or I ain't coming. He said, that's already done. <laughs> he said, Mike's coming. So, I mean, that's how much Mike meant to me, man. Mike was the yeah. my first, uh, I mean, Summerall was a coach in the hood, but, like, my first basketball coach that I could relate to on all levels, same hood, same everything. Um, and... Knew, I could, knew he cared about me, but knew he wasn't going to let me. He wasn't taking nothing. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't going yeah. to let nothing ride. He was going to get the most out of me, man. So yeah. I love him to this day. You know what I mean? But in terms of at East, bro, he just, he was the one we could all go to, no matter what. Good, yeah. bad, indifferent. Before the game, he get his hype. He know what music to play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, he let us ride with him, spend the night, go to church with him, all that, bro. Like, okay. invaluable. It was more than it was more than just coaching, bro. It was like a big brother. Big brother. Uncle, like, yeah. Bro. You know what I'm saying? He that little league feel. That might be from that little league background. Man, he, he had. just he born he he a born leader, man. Some people just got it. It don't matter what he do, football, basketball. Like he he know what to say to get you going, bro. Yeah. It's all authentic. Like, he ain't blowing no smoke or no. I remember one time he came in the locker room and told me, he said, man, I said, man, I'm about to quit, man. Dude, cuss me out. He said, man, you going to let this white man steal your love? Come on, man. He said, man, don't let nobody steal nobody your love. Nobody never, don't let nobody steal your love for the game. Yeah. Man. And, that and it's going to get tested. It's going to get tested. Every time, bro. Every time. Bro. You know what I mean? heard that his voice in my, I heard his voice in my ear. So many times, you know what I'm saying? Like throughout my career. I mean, just like you said, man, with summer all like before we could do anything, we had to we had to run. Most on, cats man. is getting dressed leaving. Yeah. You know what I mean? No basketball involved. He filtering out who really wanted though. Yeah. He know that. You know what I'm saying? He he was getting you prepared for the next level. This is what you're gonna do in the next level. <laughs> you're gonna lift weights, you gonna... yeah. So yeah, man, those dudes taught us life lessons, man. And they was those two in particular, Mike Bell, James Summerall, was always there for me if I needed them, man. So no doubt. I got infinite love for him. But Mike, man, Mike is Mike the GOAT, man. I got so many funny stories about that, bro. I already know. <laughs> now, your decision to go to, you know, D1, go to school. Did, yeah. Or you went to JUCO before you went D1, right? Man, I got it. What was that right, like? So look, hold on. Let me, let me run down the whole place. So, yeah, how you, you know, I, I was about to drop out all that, so my grades was horrible, man. I basically yeah. had, like, 10th grade credits in the 12th grade, right? Okay. So, um, I really couldn't go straight to D1, but I signed to Hampton. They, okay. They saw me. They they liked me. They was like, yo, we going to figure it out. Don't worry. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful school, man. Yeah, lovely. Right on Shout the out to Hampton, man. man. Hampton, incredible. Even the man. big girls look good man, up there. Listen, you heard I me. I went down there. Ike. Shout Woo! out to Ike, man. He was my host. Shout I'm out like, to Ike. I'm like, man. Shout out to Ike. Real Ike. down here. <laughs> yeah, so Beautiful. They, had me, they had me. As soon as I seen all that, I'm signing. But, <laughs> but the, the reality of the situation was I ain't had my grades. Yeah. I was so far behind, all this. So I was supposed to go to prep school. I did. <clears throat> September 11th happened. I came home because they didn't have uh, they didn't have no way to pay for it. Hampton didn't have no way to pay for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I went home and went to continuation school. The principal helped me get in school. I took a visit to Iowa State. I didn't want to sit out a year. So I ended up having to go to JUCO. Where okay. Tinsley went. Where Jamal Tinsley went in California. Yeah. And, uh. I went out there, I told him about Waikiki, I told him about 
Murph, a couple other my dudes, and we went out there together. And uh, yeah, man, I had great success out in California. I got lifelong friends out there, man. Now, what was the name of that school? Mount San Jacinto. Mount San Jacinto. Yeah, so okay. I made a name for myself out there, man. Anybody you want to shout out out there? And Coach Chambers. Coach Let Chambers. Yeah, he the one, man. So okay. Everybody I play with out there, they know who they is. Uh, but yeah, bro, it was just Cali was love, bro. Cali opened my eyes to a lot of stuff, man. And um, I just had a, a great experience. I got highly recruited, but I went through a turbulent year. Um, long story short, I got recruited by like everybody in the country, bro. Honestly, mm -hmm. Connecticut won the championship that year. I got recruited by them. For sure. Uh, a lot of different schools. But mine wasn't all right. And long story short, I went to a small school that I didn't really like. Uh -huh. the University of Idaho. Uh, went out there. I hated it. Yeah. Everything about it. <laughs> now, why then, did you choose that, though? Uh, I just kind of let every school, I let my recruitment dry up. Meaning. Okay. All the schools that offered me and that had high interest, I was dragging my feet, and they got to sign somebody. In the signing period, you got to sign somebody, whether you're the first option or not. You know what I'm saying? They got to they got to fill that roster. So yeah, nah, I just let a lot of it dry up, man. I had a lot going on. Now, if you could if you could put it all together and and things that kind of fell the way you wanted them to fall, I'm a, I'm gonna go out on a limb for you, but I'm gonna see what you're gonna say. Would you have chosen like a and knowing what you know now, if you could be Taihan now, yeah. making that decision. Um, and then I also want to ask you, who was around you at that time? Like, what, was Mike Bell and Grant, or Mike this decision you Mike, made? Like, Mike, I kind of fell out of contact with. He's still living his life, got his family and doing everything. I really wasn't calling him like that. Some I was, but some was in jail. Some okay. Was in prison. So he would have helped me. Um, he would have helped me make that decision. You know my story. Pops ain't around. You know, I raised my, I pretty much raised myself. So yeah. I, that's a, so when he got game, they say, you know, it's a line in there and say, man, it's the biggest decision in your life. It is. I was just talking to Tamika Brown. Sh shout out to my girl, legend. No doubt. Um, she said the same thing. Like, we were just talking about. Shout out to me. She was talking about, you know, that's the biggest decision, business decision you make at that point in your life. And you don't, you hear that, but you don't understand the magnitude of it. So looking back, you know, I would have probably went to, uh, I would have probably either went to Creighton or Baylor. I tried to go to Baylor with my transcript. My transcript uh, wasn't good enough. It's a private school. Those are both two programs that like are, they kind of like Gonzaga. They kind of caught on around that time. Yeah. And they, I, they top listen, programs now. Scott Drew, that was his first year. When okay. I tried to, when I, I, cause he offered me an verbal. But yeah. When I sent that transcript, they couldn't accept me. But he, Scott Drew, that was his first year. Now he, he's in the final four. Right, right. Um, and right. yeah, he had, he, they were coming off like the death penalty or something crazy. And he was like, man, we're going to rebuild this thing. I want NBA guards. Yeah, he offered me. So I would probably went. I, obviously, I couldn't go there because I tried, but I would have yeah. went to. Uh, I would have went to crazy. But Crayon. now they have so many. I mean, I know a lot of these D one schools now, and especially with you training and and helping guys with that process. Don't they have like things in place if your grades aren't right now? I don't know about back then. Uh, probably so. Like developmental even classes then, even then, or like the thing was I had like a D in a, a real major class. And okay. to, you know, looking back at it, I could have probably been like, man, let me take the class over again or get it done in the summer. Mm -hmm. But I was also getting recruited by a lot of schools, so I wasn't thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, but I, I'm sure it was it's, it's ways around it. But, you know, at the time, I wasn't, I didn't make no fuss about it. And I'm going to ask you another question. Uh, during this time, how is your, how is your love for God and how is your, your, you studying the word this whole time, or when did you start in instituting that or including that into like your everyday routine? Honestly, bro, my mom implemented it from young. You know what I'm saying? She used to read the word to us. Uh, she pro she read the whole word to us. You know, like you do the, the Bible in a year. She did that with us as as her children at night, sit us down and just read the word, make us memorize scriptures and all that stuff. And we used to go to church a lot too. We used to live in Greenbrier before we moved to the Orange. And we used to, uh, like, wherever we live, we went to a church close to it so we could walk there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, uh, so we used to go to church a lot, whatever. And um, Shout out moms. Yeah, not for sure, bro. She didn't give me nothing else. She gave me that. And that's most important to me. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, so she put it in me early, man. I knew scripture, bro. It's just, you know, you out there, bro. I was outside at, like, nine, bro. Like, so when I, I'm in the hood, I'm in the projects, you getting that from mom, but shoot, you outside 10, 12 hours out of the day, school and outside. So, um, yeah, bro. So when I got old enough, I just stopped going to church and just was outside. Yeah. And, uh, and then we moved to the arms and 
it just it just continued on. So it was there early, yeah. and and then um, I think like right around it's funny because like right around my sophomore year in college is when I start feeling that pull to come back, bro. And I was I was with it. My junior year I was with it, bro. And then I don't know, you know how it is, man. It was spiritual warfare, bro. Like I was ready to go all in, and then I just I didn't. And then after college, I think what the, I think what the heavenly Father did was like humble me through the game, bro. Honestly, that's that's what I feel like. I feel like if I would have made it to the bright lights, NBA and all that, I don't know if I or what it would have took to get me back to him. But once I went D one and didn't kill, like I knew I could have. It, it, it did something to me, bro, and, it, and it, it, you know, it humbled me, bro. And I, and I'm thankful for it because pride come before destruction. You know what I'm saying? So no I'm doubt. glad I didn't stay in that vein of being pride, proud and just arrogant and all that. You know what I'm saying? Because I was getting a big head about myself. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was his way of reverting me back to him. That's what I feel. You know what I mean? And then from there, I just took it serious. I'm, I'm a serious dude. So if I really Lock in on something, you know what I mean? I'm going to try to be as good as I can at it. So the same rules apply with the word. So I just start getting in the word for myself. And what happened was, you know, I went, I tried to go back to institutionalized Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And What happened to you there? <laughs> a lot happened. Uh, I just saw it for what it is, you know what I mean? It's a man-made religion. And I'm for the Bible wholeheartedly. But um, I just had to read it for myself. Once I started reading the word for myself, fasting, turning you know blocking everything else out and really getting my own understanding um it unlocked it unlocked a lot bro and it allowed me to um to have guidance the guidance that i've been looking for my whole life um i finally tapped into it man from there wow. father, 